Up next, we have Pitcher Tech from Santiago, Chile, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carolina. Our group is Pitcher Tech from Chile, and I'm going to present you our service. CRS system, crane rigging safety system. The last year, construction industry represented the 6% of the global GDP, and it managed $5 trillion in just one year. By 2020, the industry will double or even more than numbers. So this is growing fast. And we worry about how this is growing because construction is the industry with the highest number of accidents, even over manufacturing and transportation. Of those accidents, the third most common cause are cranes. Actually, here in the US, 72 people died by crane accidents in 2006, and more than 800 people died in a period of nine years. But this is much bigger because Every time that someone dies, there is more than 40 accidents and more than 600 incidents. So we need to understand how a crane accident happened. The crane has an operator and a rigger. The rigger is the person who loads the crane and also alerts the workers that something is passing over their heads by blowing a whistle. So the first, the first case happened when the crane is in balance. Another case happened when the object hit something else, like this. And the third and most common case happened when the object just falls from the hook. And that's normally because the rigger didn't load the crane correctly. So I just want to make a pause here because we need to remember the focus. That is lives, because the life itself is the most important thing. And besides the natural and deep suffering that a death can cause, there's other problems too, because accidents are the third most common cause of productivity decrease in construction. And let me tell you something. A couple of months ago, in our university, there were a crane accident, and it was a fatal accident. And they had to stop the construction for more than three months. So a crane, an accident in, in construction means lost days, workers perform a decrease, structural damage, and high costs. $136,000 is the cost that a construction company has to pay for a non-fatal accident, just one. And what about fatal accidents? Well, $4 million is the cost that a construction company has to pay for just one fatal accident. That is enough money to carry, enough money to carry a company into bankruptcy. So we need to ask us, how is the market facing the problem today? There is eye proximity, which is a collision avoidance solution that can alert the operator when the crane's chief is close to hit something. There is also ProPeak, which is a solution based on cameras, so the operator can see what is under the hook. And there is also other solution that has been implemented in another industry, like mining, that is called CAS, which is also a collision um, avoidance solution that can uh, alert when someone or something is close to the machine. So our challenge is to prevent crane accidents and provide new security and productivity parameters. That's CRS system challenge, but how does it work? CRS system is a service working under the philosophy of safe zone. The mechanism led us to locate every worker on the ground through real-time location systems. It unified operator and rigger visions, because they will see the same at the same time on a device. The sensor will also alert workers when they enter into a critical zone. And also the crane chief will have a loud alarm, so the crane operator and the rigger can turn on the alarm in case there is any imminent accident. So, the crane, chief, I'm sorry, the crane operator and the rigger will all have access to the workers' positions. They can also set critical points so the operator can avoid them. That means avoid new accidents. 
They can turn on the alarm in case the users decide there is a problem and they can also have access to the lifting record. So now we have a lot of information here. How can we use that information to prevent crane accidents? So we know workers' positions and we also know the exact path that the object is to in until it reaches the final destination. We're going to collect that data, we're going to analyze that data, and we're going to develop some metrics and parameters. What kind of? Well, times that the workers has been located inside of critical zones, times that the objects has been close to reach a critical point, the workers that has been constantly located inside of dangerous zones, and of course the zones with the highest concentration of people. This parameter or metric will be also highly helpful to control productivity. So what makes us valuable is that we can unify operator and rigor views, because they will see the same at the same time. We can also decrease accidents rate, we can increase productivity, and of course, encourage working awareness. So this gave us, this gave us a strong advantage over our own competition, because none of them can, uh, can really unify views, and they cannot know the exact workers' positions either. So if I'm the owner of a construction, I have two options. I can rent a crane, or I can buy one. Most of the construction companies normally rent their cranes, so we're going to focus in that market. But we can also implement our service in both. So we're going we're gonna to develop our devices and our service. Then we're going to implement that service in cranes from crane rental companies. And why that? Because if we can work with more crane rental companies, uh, then it will be easier to work with more construction companies. So, because the construction companies are the one who has to pay for every accident. So when they're going to rent a crane, they want a crane rental company with more value. So we're going to give them more value. So we created a nine-month plan, um, nine plans to develop our prototype, which include the define the suppliers, hire the professionals, acquire the components, the, um, develop the software, integrate the technologies, and of course test and test and test. And that will cost us around $87,000, just the development of our prototype. So what is next? As I said, we're going to start developing our prototype and we're going to identify test partners in Chile because that's the market where we're going to start working in. Then we're going to manufacturing, uh, we're going to ma manufacture ma our devices and we're going to start making our first sales by 2018. Then we're going to reinvest and hopefully we will expand our service to all South America by uh, um, 2020. So growing as a company could be impossible without partners. And because we want to start working in Chile, then we need to make partnerships with, um, with some companies there. And because also we're going to, go, we're going to enter into the market through them. So these are our projections. As you can see, the first nine months, we're going to develop the prototype. Then we need to create the eight units, units for a, for, to, the, I mean, to, to implement our service in eight cranes. After that, to do that, we need an initial investment of around $200,000. Then we're going to start selling, and we have to reinvest two times. So we have to implement our service in 12 cranes to start making money, which is 1% of the total market that we have in Chile today. So the monthly fee will, fee will be $1,500 to start making money in the month 39. This is Picture Tech, this is our team. We are all civil engineers from students of civil engineering of Universidad Católica of Chile with majors in construction. And we know a lot about construction industry, physics, and business, but we're highly aware that we have a high luck about software development, about safety laws, and about electronics. So our conclusion is that we need partners. And I just want to finish saying the same thing that Alvarez said, said once. If you always do what you always did, then you will always get what you always got. So we just dream to have one day a complete control of every movement in construction, eliminating the uncertainties and saving people's lives. Thank you.
thank you very much for the presentation. Can you explain to us how it actually works? Does the person, the human, has to wear a beacon? Yeah. Okay. I can explain. First question. Second yeah. question. Um, whilst uh, human life is very, very important, and it costs $4 million, but there are other important damages to materials, and if not everything has a beacon on it, how do you potentially protect non-humans on the construction site? Yeah, I will answer your first question first. So every worker will have a sensor on their safety hub. Um, so that sensor will alert them when they enter into a critical zone. The rigger and the operator will have a device where they can see the worker's positions. So if there is any imminent accident, they can also turn on an alarm. But the the good part of all of this is that the manager will also have access to a platform where they can have security and productivity metrics, the ones that I showed you before. So basically they will be working and the sensor will alert them when there is any problem and they, the sensor will also alert them when they enter into a critical zone. Why can't the camera solution solve that? The camera? Uh, the cameras will just um, show the operator what is under the, the hook, but it, it didn't give you much, it, it doesn't give you much information actually. He cannot see very much, so it's not working right now. And can you repeat the second question? Cause yeah, so if the humans need Yeah. Yeah, of course. So, as I said, one of the cases when an uh, accident happens is when some, the object hits something else. So, um, when you have the, this software, the operator and the rear and, and the manager can um, set critical points so they can know where they have, what places they have to avoid uh, when, they are, um, when they are moving the, the crane. Um, but our challenge is prevent accidents. It's prevent people's deaths. It's prevent accidents. People, people having accidents. So, we're not really um, avoid an accident. I mean, we're not gonna avoid that something can fall. We go and we're gonna avoid the accident, the human accident that that can cause. Right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have you have you tested the fifteen hundred a month price point for the? Uh, crane rental, that seems like a pretty hefty uh, markup on top of the expenses that they'd have to carry out to their customers. Have you tested that price point? Yeah, the, thank you for your question. The, the price, the monthly fee, N nowadays the, the price that they have to pay for every rental, it's $1,200 per day. Um, the, well, that depends on the type of crane, the, the size of the construction, obviously. But yeah, and we're expecting to have that, that cost just the first 90, 39 months to return the, the investment, but then we depends on the number of cranes that we're, we're gonna be operating. Um, we can move that price as, as, I wish, as we wish. Thank you. Uh, the examples we've looked at are tower cranes, mm -hmm. and which means a very large site, typically, yeah. which means a lot of workers, yeah. most of which are not working with the crane. Yeah. Would you plan on having sensors on all of the employees, yeah. including those who are not working with the crane? And yeah. is there a does the price? It is. Um, the prices that we um, that we put here are all based on a construction with 50 workers at the same time, which is an average in the U.S. here. Um, but yeah, the price will depend, as I said before, on the size of the construction. So, if you have a big construction, they will you you will be willing to pay more for that. That's uh, that's something that happened. But yeah, every worker will have their sensor. I'm, I'm going to echo the concern about price, but yeah. you had a slide that showed uh, 48 months or something and three cranes installed maybe in the first mm -hmm. year or two, two, something like I that. I pull that one. Yeah, pull that up. I'm, my question is, um, you know, there you go. So eight cranes, then two, then two. What's, what's the holdup? I, I mean, if it works, I would think that you'd be able to get, is it a pricing concern or why wouldn't you get more, more installations? 
um, because we don't want um, 12 cranes mean that we have to work with two or three big crane rental companies. So, I mean, if we can work with more than them, then will be, I mean, better for us. But we don't want to make um, really high expectation. We just want to make that low. But if we can, I, and I think we can work with more because it is really a really low percentage. So we can work in, in more cranes and it will be easy. I don't know if I answered your question. And, and that 1,150 cranes, that's in Chile? Yeah. And did you talk about expanding beyond Chile or, or that's, this is, this is focused on yeah, Chile? Yeah, I, I, when I showed the five years plan, I said that our five year, we're gonna start expanding to all South America. And then when it depends on how much it takes us, we're gonna globalize. Thank you. So would this would require a pretty controlled site then, meaning if there's a delivery for something, well, the person coming on to the site does not have a sensor on. Mm -hmm. Or if there's a visitor, for whatever reason, yep. that person does not have a sensor on it. Yeah. Do you think it would require? Um, at least in Chile and here too, they have high regulations. When they, when someone enter into the, into the cons in, a, in a construction, they have to wear a um, safety hat. And all the hats that they, the hat that they will have there will have the sensor. So. They cannot enter into the construction without the sensor. It's, they have to use the safety hut, and the safety hut will have it. Thanks. Have you had detailed conversations with, with crane companies? Because you're, you're proposing more than just a product or service. This is a different method that the operators have to use. In other words, everybody has to buy into it. Everybody has to agree, OK, this is the, you know, I'm going to wear this thing. I know what I, I, know what I have to do. Uh, you know, so do the crane operators, do they say, yeah, this is, this is, this is the right way to do it? Yeah, the crane operators say that was fine. Um, the, the workers will not have much information there. They just have to wear the sensor because they will not. And we try to do this. After we talk with them, we realize that we need, um, um, they have some th other things inside of the cabin. So we need to this, we need to make this as easier as we wanted. So as we need it. Um, yeah. Uh, so the idea is that they can use this, and it has to be really um, usable for them. Right. So it will take um, a couple of days, a month, to train people. But that's the thing. We want to train people. We don't want to. We don't want to. Uh, we don't want to, I mean, we don't want to like. Um, Avoid people from I mean, from working. We just want to train them to be more like safe. And because the, when you rent a crane in a construction company, usually that crane comes with an operator. So because we're gonna work with a crane rental company, then we can train them. And that's it. Yeah. Back. Back in the day, I worked some construction jobs and had to wear a hard hat. And the first thing I did was take it off and flip it over my shoulder in my car. And so my question is for uh, goofballs like me that aren't really uh, caring too much about the hard hat at the end of the day, how have you built into your sensor device uh, enough ruggedization to withstand somebody from just sort of casually throwing their hard hat around? Yeah. Um, we make this so it is not going to be easy to take it off. Um, we we contemplate that we will have to lose some sensors because, as you say, in construction, the workers do not have really, um, they are not really like, um, how can I say that, like um, aware that that is really valuable, so they don't care that much. So we we thought about that and we have, uh, we contemplate in our process that we will have to um, change some sensors some amount of time. Um, that's it. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Uh, okay, a couple questions from the audience. Uh, first one, does it work with different types of cranes? Oh yeah, it does. Uh, actually, I can work, show you. So, we have different type of cranes. My, 
you might know, uh, there's the common tower crane that you can see all over the city. Uh, we can install that, in, this in crawler cranes, in transtainers that are commonly in the coast. It's like, um, yeah, we can put it in that. Okay, so. and uh, um, I guess the, the really the question is, will construction companies really want to invest in this as they need to teach new staff, new health and safety rules, install the systems, maintain it, uh, et cetera? Yeah, they, they want to do it because they don't want to pay four million dollars. They don't want to go into bankruptcy. So yeah, they want to be this, but they don't know how to do it. So we are trying to save some people's life and we know that they are willing to, to install our services. And um, yeah. Okay, uh, and have you tested it? Um, the, the technology, we didn't test the uh, real-time location system technology that we're gonna use because it is really, um, it is really expensive for us. But we did it with other kind of technologies, and it works. And real-time location systems are not really like um, um, weird uh, system of technology. It is used all over the globe, and it works. Uh, we know that works. There is a lot of investigations and. Yeah, it is. We know how to use it. Have you spoken to any labor unions about the product, meaning the unionized labor? The uh, yeah, we, we talked with people from the industry. We talk with. Uh, we have a lot of professors, professors in our university that works uh, daily in construction, and they, yeah, they, they, they. We talked with them. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.